Well, as usual, I'm always getting to these recordings a little bit late, but Range Engine 1.6 has been released as of March. So we're going to be talking about it today and the new features and updates that Range 1.6 comes with. With Range 1.6 comes a new sky shader. This is a new PBR based sky rendering system that was added to Range 1.6 with a more accurate simulation of light scattering, resulting in some smooth, realistic gradients as seen in the sunrise and sunsets. And you can change whether the stars are enabled or disabled in the world settings. The new star effect is also present in the new and the old sky shader. You can return to the old sky by disabling the atmospheric sky option. Sky interaction has also been improved on objects, giving a significant visual improvement. Height fog has also been introduced to the engine, allowing us to add the quintessential swamp map to our games, as every game should have. We now have post-processing shaders that are integrated directly into the engine. It works both in the viewport and in the game runtime. And we no longer have to test the game to see if our shaders are working. It is also now possible to apply custom shaders to range materials. On top of that, foliage shaders have also been improved. Previously, the foliage shader only worked on tree leaves and bushes, but now it's been improved to work with grass. Previously, if you tried to make grass using this foliage shader, it would be all wobbly and weird on the ground. But now with the new grass option, your grass can finally wave and not whirble around. There has also been a new improvement to emit shading. Previously, any true emission color was simply a diffuse color emitted again and the emission influence of a texture affected only the emission intensity. Now the emission influences the texture controls whether the RGB values are added to the material after the lighting and shadow stages, allowing it to be independent from the diffuse color emission. The old behavior can still be achieved with RGB to intensity options. There's also now custom colliders. Custom colliders allow you to swap the collision mesh from another object without actually having to duplicate it. Decals have also been implemented into the engine, allowing us to add graffiti, spray paint, any kind of other decals you would add on walls. Another minor thing are Halo material support, allowing the rendering of vertices as if they were points. Python has also been updated for range 1.6 using Python 3.11, bringing new features and performance improvements. Along with the Python update comes some new component interface improvements, allowing you to stylize your components. Range 1.6 has also implemented a new input system, allowing for more flexible input options than the old logic.keyboard method. This system is located under the user preferences input system tab. It works with three tables, input maps, tables containing the key combinations for each condition, the input table, a table containing all key calls, and input binding. Input binding is the actual key that will be pressed or the use of information such as joysticks, mice, or key inputs. This also allows for the binding of processors. Processors allow you to directly change the result of a value. Another thing that was added to the engine are sound effects, or the ability to change or manipulate audio. At the moment, only speakers support sound effects. It does not work using only the audio library. Real-time mesh creation has also been added. It is now possible to create meshes in real time with the KX Mesh Builder. Range 1.6 has now implemented a new particle system. Previously, to create particles, it was necessary to create a system from scratch. Now, Easy Emit has been implemented directly into Range, and is completely rewritten and optimized. We are also able to now set action layer speeds. This allows you to more precisely manipulate the speed of an action. The text object has also received some improvements. If you are a user of Logic Bricks, there has been a few minor improvements such as the ability to color code your logic bricks. There has also been an update where you can write down what an action does on the logic sensor. The sun has also got a little bit of an update allowing for a shadow fade out. This makes it so your shadows don't just have a ugly abrupt cutoff. LODs are essential for games and now it is possible to make the LOD invisible depending on the distance. This saves a ton on performance. Do you like setting a custom mouse cursor? There is a new Python function to be able to change the mouse icon in the game mode. In addition, there is a new optional option to disable the MIP map, so you can use a pixelated cursor. If you want to know what processor the user is using, there is a new function that allows you to get that name. The function is simply logic.getProcessorName. And some minor shader improvements. There is now a change blend mode to screen mode and additive mist. 
And with that, thanks for watching. This has been a quick update on Range 1.6. I hope you enjoyed it. I've been Lox, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.